Hello everyone, welcome to part 3 of our modular design tutorial on making our little level kit. Uh, let's take a little preview of what we are going to create here and then we'll talk about how we're going to proceed. Now normally at this stage we would unwrap our models and then bring them into Substance Painter and then texture them. That's the usual process that we follow. Model, unwrap, texture. But with these modular kits we're actually going to do it out of order a little bit. Uh, let me explain why. We can see here, uh, this is, uh, here's one I prepared earlier. We've got all our little modular pieces, our pillars, walls, floor tiles, uh, our little cross piece, corner piece, straight piece, all the pieces that we made in the last video. Uh, here we can see them textured. And what you'll notice is a kind of consistency running through all of them. All the walls have these tiles. They have the blue strip along the top. Uh, the continual red uh, dotted pattern here on these uh, walkways on the floor. And we've got these little yellow walkway, uh, yellow warning labels in certain parts. So you might be thinking the traditional way we would do this is to take each little piece, unwrap it, and then add a texture to it in, say, Substance Painter. Now, we could do that, but that would be a very inefficient way of working. When it comes to the environments, when it comes to these modular kits, we actually have another method of texturing that we haven't encountered very much before, but I want to teach you because it is a fantastic method of texturing your models. It will allow you to texture multiple models with one set of maps. It's really, really efficient and it can be reused across multiple objects. And uh, it's fantastic. Once you know how to do it, it will instantly level up your 3D modeling skill. It's a technique known as trim sheets. Now, I do have a video on this uh, explaining the different types of textures, uh, and I do have a set of videos on modular exteriors, which mentions these briefly, but I want to take a little bit of time now talking about how we come up with this texture and a little bit about how we make it. Now, we're not going to do a full detailed uh, Photoshop tutorial here. Uh, it should be fairly self-explanatory. If you have any Photoshop skill at all, you should be able to make something like this, uh, make something up as you go uh, and get something workable. But the key features of a trim sheet is that it is halfway between a UV unwrap texture, like we would do for any normal object, and also halfway between a full tiling texture, like we would have, say, grass on a field. It's halfway between both. It combines some of the features of both those things. Uh, but one of the key features of a trim sheet is we make the texture first before we unwrap the object. So let me explain a little bit about what's happening here. You can see in this texture, it is a square texture map. Uh, we're looking at the diffuse map here. And we have these horizontal bands of different, uh, what you would call materials. So we've got these kind of square tiles, got this uh, blue sort of polka dot texture here, this red large polka dot texture. We've got these gray panels. I've got this little strip of warning tape as well. And what we want to do is basically, once this texture is made, we want to unwrap our models to this texture rather than vice versa. We just unwrap the model and then apply textures to it after the fact. We have this pre-made texture first of all and what it means is that each of our different objects we can unwrap them and line up the different parts of the model to these parts of the texture which then allows all of our models to share the same texture map. All of them have consistency, the blue along the top, consistent tiles along each type of tile uh, consistent flooring across each of our floor objects, etc. So really, really efficient way. Those 11, 12, 13, 14, 20 different objects that you want to make all share these same texture maps. Really, really efficient way. Uh, there's a really good series on trim sheets by an artist known as Tim Simpson. I will provide a little link below. Uh, his work on this is fantastic. He's an environmental artist uh, in the industry. His videos are well worth checking out. Uh, so I'm going to give the, the Cliff Notes version of uh, some of his techniques, but I advise you to go check those out as well. So if you recall back in our modeling tutorial, we made our grid three meters by three meters, and we divided that into six sections. We're going to do the same thing here. I have made a blank Photoshop document, uh, and for handiness, I've made it 1,200 pixels by 1,200 pixels because that can be divided by six. Uh, our models that we made in the last video also uh, came from a little six by six plane. Uh, so just having those subdivisions in there will make things easier to kind of work out in our heads as we make these. 
Now, one of the things that you might be wondering is how do we set up our grid like this in Photoshop? All we have to do is go to Edit, go down to Preferences, Guides, Grid and Slices. And in here we can set up our custom grid. So knowing that my overall image size is 1200 by 1200 pixels, I've set a grid line every 400 pixels, which would be dividing into thirds, and then two subdivisions, dividing those thirds again into sixths. Now I could do this just uh, a grid line every 200 pixels, and uh, just one subdivision. That would also work equally as well. But if we do this, we get these grid lines up. And what's great about these grid lines is we can use our marquee tool and they will snap to those grid lines. So if I just hide my diffuse texture here and we were starting from scratch, I would uh, make a new layer. I would grab my marquee tool and it will automatically snap to these lines. And then I can just fill it with colors and textures however I want. That way I can keep this all within these six stripes. Now, I don't need to do six stripes. I could put 10 stripes in here. I could have a lot more materials in here to give me a bit more variety in the texture. I simply kept it at six strips here. I made these gray ones two strips high uh, just to give me uh, something bigger. But you could have 10, 15, 20 strips of materials in here, uh, some thicker, some thinner, to give you little areas. So we can see there that blue strip goes around the top. The yellow goes along the top here and along the floor. We could have split that into two, uh, split any of these bands into two, for example, and had thinner strips run around. We can absolutely do that. I've just kept it six by six to keep it roughly in the same scale as the uh, models themselves. So as I say, I'm not going to go into detail about how we can make all these individual things. With a little bit of Photoshop skill, you can make whatever texture you want. Just try to work within those horizontal strips. Try and work within those grids. Uh, one little tip I will tell you is how do we create this kind of grid pattern here? A very simple way, we can use our brush tool just with a hard round brush. And if we bring up our window and brushes, sorry, brush settings, we can increase the spacing of the brush. So what I will do is just increase the spacing there until we get a nice little bit of space between them. I'll just create a new layer. And if we just click, hold shift and drag, uh, bring that above what we can actually see there. There we go. I'll show you that again. Click, hold shift and drag. We can create these horizontal lines of dots. Let me just clear that. Fix you back where you were. Oh, bear with me one second. Just bring you where we can see you before we actually start painting. There we go. So I'll draw one horizontal line of dots. Grab my move tool. Hold the shift and alt keys. And then I can drag this line down. And nudge it with my arrow keys. Just to create a duplicate of it. Uh, just repeat that same pattern over again. Hold shift and alt. Drag it down. Nudge it with the arrow keys just to make these lines and rows of dots. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on the actual Photoshop side of this. But one thing I do want to show you is how we can generate our other maps from this. Now, Photoshop is not the best for creating our different types of maps, but we can create some nice rough and ready maps uh, from this. Uh, we can make our roughness maps. So remember, roughness Black is not rough at all, i.e. shiny, and white is 100% roughness, i.e. rough, a very matte finish. So what I've done is my diffuse layers here, which I've kept separate for each one, I've made a duplicate of those, put it into the roughness, and just uh, filled it with a different shade of grey, different shades of grey for different roughness values. And... Easy peasy, that gets us our roughness map. Your roughness map is just a, a slider from black to white to show what's rough and what's shiny. Uh, but more interestingly, let's look at our normal map. Now we can generate normal maps in Photoshop. They're not the 100% best normal maps you can get using something like Substance Painter or Substance Designer will get you a better result. 
But if you don't have those softwares, uh, Photoshop can be used to get you normal maps that will look good enough for a, a blind man on a galloping horse, as they say. If you look too closely at them, they're maybe not perfect. But for just general everyday use, they'll do the job. So here's one that I've kind of half prepared earlier. I'm just going to show you how we can make one of our little strips. Now you'll notice that I have multiple layers here. We do have to do this separately, strip by strip. So let me show you how we do that. I'm going to take that little uh, red strip here. Now this red strip, I have it saved as two separate layers, the studs and the red underlay. So I'm going to select both of those. I'm going to duplicate them, right click and duplicate layers. And I'm just going to drag that copy up into my normal folder. And what I'm going to do is just hit control, select the top layer there, select the top of the two, hit control E on my keyboard to merge those. So that's now all one layer. Let me just hide that diffuse as well to clear up any confusion. And hide that extra layer that we made, we don't need anymore. So there we go. This is just the piece I want to turn into my normal map. Here we go. I can... Now, let, let me show you the wrong way to do this, and then I'll show you how we can fix this, get a better result. Now, it's very easy to actually generate the normal map, but we just need to do a few extra steps to make it a good normal map. All we have to do when we have our layer here is go up to Filter, 3D, Generate Normal Map. When we do that, we'll get this little menu that should appear eventually. Do, do, do. There we go. And we can see we are getting a normal map automatically generated. A few tips... Uh, I want my studs to look as if they're sticking out the way, out from the surface. So, having done trial and error on this, to make that look right, we want to have the dark navy side on the top and the sort of light blue turquoise side on the bottom of each individual dot. We have an invert button here. If we invert, we can see we get the, the navy on the bottom, turquoise on top. We want to make sure this is inverted. We just want to make sure that the navy is on top and the turquoise is on the bottom we can also change the scale here if you want to really press this uh normal map you can see how intense it looks there again from uh, trial and error this works better with a much lower uh lower instance of it uh, and all i have to do is hit okay and that will give me a normal map now that looks good on first glance but there's one little thing that i want to fix here if i zoom in you can maybe just see that up at the top here, we've got a kind of a navy shadow all along the top. And we've got that turquoise shadow all along the bottom. Which will mean that when we bring this texture into 3D Studio Max and we stack two of these uh, beside each other, there's going to just be a little bit of a... Sort of, it looked like a little bit of a crease or a little bit of a, a valley in the in the texture between between these rows where this looks like it's pointing up the way this looks like pointing down the way we get a weird little shadow highlight so we need to eliminate that before we uh, are happy with this normal map so if we undo our little normal map it's very very easy to fix this what we want to do is select this layer if we're on our move tool we hold the shift and alt key and we can duplicate it we just want to duplicate one copy down and one copy up. And the one that we're going to keep is in the middle. We will just hit Control E on our keyboard to merge each of these visible layers all into one. And then we're going to just repeat that process again. 3D filter, 3D generate normal map. Uh, same sentence before is fine. But we're going to hit OK. Now, the important thing is here, we've still got that little dark purple band at the top and the light turquoise band at the bottom. But in the middle here, we're not getting that at all. reason why this is happening is it's the edge of the layer and the normal map filter is just assuming that edge of the layer, we want a little bit of curve on it. Now, you and I know that we don't, but Photoshop doesn't know that. So we have to use this little workaround to create this extra, extra data either side of what we actually want to keep just to keep the middle area clear. Once we've generated this, all we have to do is take our marquee tool. Uh, let me hide that 3D icon there. Again, using our grids and our grid snap to make this easier, we're just going to select that top chunk and it will snap. We'll just delete that. Take our bottom chunk, delete that. Perfect normal map. 
Uh, we do our other pieces use that same process. Uh, so for this one, we would have duplicated one below and then deleted it afterwards. Uh, we have this piece here. Uh, and the last thing I want to do for the other areas where I'm not going to have any real normal data, all I want to do is create a layer that fills in the rest with a neutral color. So all I need to do is take my uh, eyedropper tool, just select one of these neutral colors right in the middle and just fill a blank layer with that neutral color, just to give me the full normal map. All I have to do then is, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, save this out as a PNG. Well, technically, I would want to resize as well. My image size I set to 1200 because it's a nice division of six. Uh, each little chunk is 200 pixels and it matches in with my little six chunks on my, my polygon grids. But when we do textures, we want our textures to be powers of two. So we could set these down to 1024. Just shrink them that texture down a wee bit. Into a texture size that's a power of two, it'll work nicer in our game engine. So we can do that once we're happy with everything. And then just file, save as, or export as a PNG. Easy peasy. So that's how we get our textures. That's how we get our trim sheets. Uh, if you're not familiar with what the purpose of these trim sheets is, let me show you another little example just before we finish this video uh, of another model that I made previously. It's this little stone altar, and you can see that we have these continuous bands of different types of stone rotating all the way around. Now, instead of me unwrapping this model uh, and having lots of discs and circles in the, in the unwrap, how I unwrapped this was a lot of concentric circles, which I then snipped and then straightened into long straight bands. I then applied those long straight bands to this trim sheet. If I just shrink this down, bring it beside. You'll see what we have here. Very, very similar horizontal bands. Now these ones, instead of being hand painted in Photoshop, these were made from photo textures, uh, cobblestones, different types of bricks and pavement slab that went on the ground. And uh, you can see it most clearly here in these two large slabs with the cracks in them, vertical crack, horizontal crack. So we took this concentric circle and we straightened it out and we basically laid that strip of polygons horizontally uh, across this part of the texture. Now because it tiles left and right, our strip of polys could hang off to the left and hang off to the right and it would all work totally fine. Um, it's very, very obviously repeating with that horizontal and vertical crack. Uh, but it shows the effect of what we can do. Now, if you still don't understand, it will all be made clear in the next video in part three uh, when we do the actual unwrapping. Um, so if you want to skip to that video, uh, get more hands-on with it, it should make sense. These textures that I have made, uh, I'm going to make these available for you so you can actually follow along with the tutorial. And as I say, when we get hands-on with it, it should make more sense. But... Uh, if you followed along with that, I hope you can see how this could be a useful technique, the, the trim sheet technique, in order to use one set of maps to texture a whole lot of objects. As I say, there's other great uh, tutorials out there for this. Uh, I'm going to link to uh, Tim Simpson's Polygon Academy channel, where he does a, a great explanation of this. can probably explain it a lot better than I can, and it's well worth spending the hour or two to watch those videos. So I'm going to leave this one here for now. Um, you can use this texture that I'll supply or you can try to make one your own um, I would suggest just use that 6x6 um, six six grid as well for this example uh, or if you want to be more adventurous you can try maybe creating 8, 10 different strips and see what you can come up with uh, we'll leave it there for now and I will see you in the next video where we are going to uh, unwrap our pieces so that this texture will apply to them so thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.